If you've ever tried to build prototypes or any physical items, then you know the struggle of turning your perfect CAD model into an actual object. Perhaps you've marveled at the capabilities of an industrial powder-based 3D printer and wish you had enough money to buy one. Well, what if you do? Introducing Micron, a desktop selective laser sintering 3D printer. It's capable of printing any geometry you can dream of without the need for support structures and all with the strength and durability of an injection molded part. The printer features a fully enclosed material handling system along with a simple post-processing workflow that doesn't spew powder all over your work area. It will be launching later this year starting at $29.99. This is the first video in a multi-part series where I'll be going over how we managed to design this printer and the machine's capabilities. So what is SLS and what makes it special? SLS is a process that takes powdered plastic and fuses them together with a high powered laser to form fully dense parts. Plastic powder, most commonly nylon, is laid down in 100 micron layers and preheated to just below its melting point. Then a laser beam scans across the powdered surface, selectively welds the powder together to form a cross section of your part. This process is then repeated until you have your parts. One of the major advantages of SLS is that there is no need for support structures since the layers are supported by unfused powder from the previous layers. Therefore, whatever you are able to design in CAD, whether that's interlocking mechanisms or large unsupported features, it can be printed out. Also, since you can basically print in mid-air, parts can be placed on top of each other, making for full use of the build volume. Now, I didn't invent SLS. In fact, the patent of it expired 10 years ago. However, the closest we've gotten to a desktop machine are still ones that cost well over $10,000 and make a huge mess. So how did we manage to build one that is easy to use for such a low price? It all comes down to our powder handling system, heating design, and of course, the laser. Traditionally, SLS printers have two build pistons, one for storing new powder and one where the actual printing happens. Powder is swept from one piston to another, layer by layer, and the excess is dumped into an overflow bin. The problem with this design is that it's very difficult to use as you have to manually fill up the printer and fully clean it before every single print, which usually takes 15 to 30 minutes. It's also not possible to change materials without disassembling the entire machine for cleaning. To get around this, we designed our printer to have a removable, fully self-contained build unit where the new powder is stored directly below the build plate. The new powder is automatically dispensed and mixed with excess powder from the previous layers in a mixing compartment where it is then lifted to the build surface using an auger. With this design, you can load enough material into the build unit for multiple prints and the chamber automatically levels the powdered surface, eliminating the need for manually cleaning before every single print. Moreover, the top of the build chamber is enclosed by a plate of glass, which means the powder never gets into contact with the printer. This allows you to keep different materials in separate build units and swap between them instantly. After printing, the unfused powder needs to be separated from the printed parts. This is traditionally done at a dedicated sifting station where the powder is separated from the parts manually, then sandblasted to get a perfect surface finish. Unused powder then has to be weighed, and mix with new powder before loading it back into the printer. This takes up a lot of space and is not very user friendly. To keep things simple, we start by scooping out the powder cake and dumping it into a special sift bin. New powder is also added at this step. Once the lid is closed, all there's left to do is shake. The parts are separated from the unfused powder and new powder is mixed with the recycled powder, all in a single step. The parts can then be cleaned up in a sandblaster or brushed by hand in front of a detachable dust extractor if you don't have a sandblaster. Another major challenge with SLS is heating control. SLS requires the build chamber to be heated to just below the melting point of nylon, around 175 degrees, before being fused together with the laser to avoid warping. 
This temperature must be maintained within around 2 degrees across the entire build area, as being too hot would cause unwanted powder to fuse together, and being too cold would cause parts to curl up and the recoder to crash. Traditionally, this is done by heating the entire machine to 175 degrees, which can take more than an hour and consumes lots of electricity. With our design, since the entire build area is enclosed by a glass plate, there is much less metal to heat up, allowing the machine to reach printing temperature in 15 minutes. Also, new powder needs to be preheated before being laid onto the build surface to avoid thermal shock. This is done by taking hot excess powder from each recoding movement, dropping it down into a mixing compartment, and mixing it with cold new powder to reach a consistent temperature. This allows us to only preheat powder as needed to reduce degradation and heat up time. Of course, the thing that impacts print quality the most is the laser system. In order to redirect the laser beam to reach different areas of the build surface, industrial 3D printers use something known as galvos, which are super fancy mirrors that can rotate. These galvos can be very costly, so entry-level machines sometimes choose to mount the laser on a core XY gantry and move them around, just like an FDM printer. This, of course, significantly limits the print speed and accuracy. Therefore, we decided that the only way to do it properly is to take the hard path and develop our own galvo system, just like the industrial machines. Now, the galvo actuators themselves are actually quite simple, as they're basically just mirrors attached to a brushless DC motor with an optical encoder. The difficult part is in precisely controlling the movement of the servos, as even a few hundred nanometers of error at the mirror can get amplified when the laser beam reaches the print surface, resulting in visible surface defects. Not to mention, the mirrors need to move around at more than 10 kHz while maintaining submicron accuracy at all times. Originally, we tried designing a digital controller using a really fancy ADC and DAC with ultra-low noise linear regulators, as all 21st century kids would. However, the performance was not that great and the costs were out of control. Therefore, we decided to ditch doing it digitally and design a fully analog controller that uses voltages and currents to do all the control loop calculations. This allows the galvos to have excellent accuracy and response times. To slice the parts for SLS printing, I originally used Cura with a custom G-code translator. However, I quickly ran into the limitations in how I can control the laser raster patterns. Also, none of the existing slicers can arrange parts for you automatically in 3D. Trying to manually pack a build chamber full of parts is not a fun process. Therefore, I decided to bite the bullet and build our own slicer, Micro Slicer, from the ground up using Unreal Engine 5. Not only does this give us complete freedom to control the laser movements, it also allows us to use its powerful physics engine to interactively pack parts into the build volume. Moreover, game optimizations allow us to maintain usable frame rates when packing hundreds of highly complex models. Of course, all printing parameters are open and you are free to use third-party materials. So now that you know how the printer works, let's see what materials you can choose from and how they print. For SLS, there are several materials to choose from. Nylon 12 balances strength, impact resistance, and details. It's the most commonly used SLS material and will be used in most of the demonstrations. Other materials include TPU for flexible parts, glass or carbon filled nylon 12 for even more strength, and nylon 11 for tough but ductile parts. Let's start with the classic Benchy, but let's print a bunch of them in different orientations. As you can see, they all came out very nicely. Of course, None of the traditional overhang tests are any match for SLS either. Interlocking geometries can also be printed without any issues and clearance tests are movable all the way down to 0.15 millimeters. Looking at part accuracy, the printer can typically hold less than 0.1 millimeters on small to medium sized features. Larger parts can also be printed with no warping. Here you can see a part that I have cut in half and polished. The inside is fully solid with no visible layer lines, making the parts very strong and durable. Currently, we're finalizing a few details and will be launching in a few months. 
In the meantime, subscribe, follow us on our Discord server, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments below.